Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another art journal video. So today it's Mixed Media Tuesday and I thought it would be fun to create an art journal project where I will be shopping only from my stash. So I will be playing with products that I have for years and I hope this will inspire you to create something new with old things. Now I will be playing today on my Dina Weekly Blue Journal and if you don't have such a journal you can always work on just a sheet of paper. Make sure that it is quite thick like a thick watercolor paper that can take mediums nicely. I'm going to play with text stamps. These are text stamps from Tim Holtz from various older collections. These are well loved. I'm also going to use this stencil. That's the schoolhouse. I've used it tons of times. It's very versatile and can be used on any project. And finally, these are the stamps that I'm going to play with. These are from the Blueprint collection by Tim Holtz. Very old ones, but I absolutely love them. I have been using them for years and I did share lots of projects using the leaves Today I'm going with uh, the leaf, the acorn and the apple and just like always let's start by creating the background. I am going to work on my Dina Weekly Blue Journal and I'm just looking for a blank page here. I will be working directly on the page, I haven't prepped the page with gesso or anything else and I'm going to apply on top embossing paste. Now I'm going to use this embossing paste that I have for years and you can see it's almost finished so it's a good idea to finish it up completely. After all I'm playing with very old supplies today. So I will apply the paste in different areas of my page making sure that I don't create complete rectangles. I like to have an organic look and feel. You can't see much at the moment, after all it is white on white, however this paste does not resist the paint that we add on top, so it is going to be colored, but it is going to give some texture and uh, dimension on the background. Now the paste is completely dry, hope you can see what I have up to now, and now it's time to apply some color. For that I am going to use this white brush just because it is bigger, and I can cover up quickly a bigger area. Now for today I'm going to play with distress paints. These are acrylic paints actually and I have them for years. Some of them are dry, some of them aren't, so it's a good idea since I'm shopping my stash today to try them out and see what I have. Now the tops are the old style tops with the dabber which is completely dry so I'm just going to use them directly. I don't want to lose any of that paint. Here is a dry dabber and no paint can go through that and here is how the new paints come with a flip top. First of all I'm going to spray the whole area with water. I want to make sure that the page is quite damp. This is going to help for uh, the look and feel that I'm going for which is going to be quite loose and runny, kind of uh, a wash on top of the page. I'm making sure that everything is nice and wet and then I'm going to dip my brush in water making sure that it is quite uh, runny and then I'm going to apply the first color. The first layer is a very pale color that's old paper. The idea here is to just cover up the bright white of the page and just because the page is already wet I'm able to apply the color really quickly and easily. It doesn't dry quickly and uh, I will be able to apply more paint on top which is going to react with the paint that I have underneath. So I'm doing a wet on wet technique here where I will be blending the colors directly on the page. So here I'm going with spiced marmalade again dipping the brush in water and that water is going to help me blend out that orange, I don't want that to be so vibrant, so I'm actually blending the orange with the color that I have underneath with old paper. Using the exact same technique, adding wet paint on top of wet paint, I'm going to continue adding a few more colors until I'm happy with the background. If you don't want the color that you put on top to blend with whatever color you have underneath, then uh, you need to make sure that this is completely dry. That just use your heat gun and then proceed to the next color. This is something that I will do in a bit. Now if you notice some of my paint is completely dry or empty, however I'm trying to use exactly what I have, I'm not using any new supplies today, after all this is a use what you have page. And at the same time I'm taking a note of the colors that are empty so that I can reorder some of them.
Now, I made sure that I didn't video edit out anything from creating the background, from adding color to the background. I'm really happy with how it looks at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and do some of my favorite techniques for the background to add some extra visual texture. And just because I want some black accents at the background, that's why I use archival link in jet black. I'm not going for the perfect impression as I'm doing my stamping. I usually do this step with archival ink just because it dries super quickly and at the same time it's permanent. So no matter what I do on top, it's not going to smudge or smear or react with probably other colors that I add on top or other mediums. Also, in this case, since I used acrylic paints for the background, I know that the background is also permanent. Always remember that in art journaling there is no right or wrong, it's just a way to express your creativity, so just do whatever you like. I'm just showing you my way and hopefully inspire you to play with some of techniques and create something completely different. Now I'm really happy with the background, I'm going to leave it aside and let it completely dry and I will move on and create the focal points. For the focal points, since I'm going for a full uh, layout today, I'm going with the apple, the acorn and one of the leaves. I'm debating on each one to go with, decided to go with the maple one. This leaf stamp set is one of my favorites of all times. I have uh, used it again and again in tons of projects and uh, even cards. And I usually say that it's not fall if I don't grab this stamp set every year to make a fall project. I usually like to create my focal points separately on another piece of paper, color them and then stick them on top of my page. This gives me the freedom of playing around with the focal points until I'm happy with the placement. And at the same time I don't make a mess on an otherwise lovely background that I'm happy with. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm stamping on a mixed media paper. It's my favorite one and you can work with any type of medium you want for coloring your focal points here. I decided for today to go with my distress inks, not the oxides, the distress inks, since I know that when I work with distress inks, they don't cover up the black lines, the stamped lines are not going to become kind of foggy and not so visible. Uh, while oxide inks do that. Another way to go would be to use your alcohol markers or you can even use your watercolors or your pencils. Just use your favorite medium and go ahead. I'm going to put on some music so you can see the whole process of coloring and shading those focal points. And I'll be back once everything is cut out.
Okay, now I have cut out all the focal points. Now I'm going with around the edges with a black marker to get rid of that white edge. This is going to cover up, kind of uh, disguise, any mistakes that I did while fuzzy cutting. And at the same time, it's going to make it look perfect. Now I'm giving them a final touch, just th some touches with brown here and there. I'm going to touch up all three of them to make sure that they are going to stand out against the background and they have a lovely shading and coloring. Also, I don't like them to look so smooth and perfect. That's why I'm going to add some uh, water splatters. These are going to react with Distress Ink and after a few seconds, I'm going to blot them with some paper towel which is going to lift some color and create this variation on the background. For extra texture on my project, I wanted to introduce some burlap. I didn't have any, so I'm just going to reuse one of the pages from the book. Don't be afraid to work with what you have. Again, as I said, today is a use what you have kind of day. So I just cut out one of the pages and I'm going to play with it. I'm measuring here how big I want the squares that I want to create to be. And I decided that uh, the side the size of that ink pad would be perfect. So that's exactly what I'm going to use as a measurement. I'm roughly going to draw four squares. The idea here was to create uh, different areas of uh, lots of layers and stick uh, the focal points on top. So I will end up having three clusters, one for each focal point, and I wanted to have different uh, textures underneath. So a layer of burlap, a layer of paper, you can even add a layer of vellum, whatever you have, or even fabric. You can easily recreate this project that I'm making today, even if you don't have the same stamps. I'm sure you can look through your stars and find uh, stamps of beautiful leaves or apples, or maybe transform this idea into something completely different with different focal points. If you do, however, create something inspired from this video and you happen to post it on Instagram, don't forget to tag me. I would love to see what you create and leave your comment there. So all I did on these pieces of burlap was to spray a little bit with brown. I did add some splatters. I just made sure that they weren't perfect and completely clean as they were in the beginning. Here I'm also adding some uh, spiced marmalade uh, <laughs> splatters. And don't ask me why I did that outside of my splatter box. And now, of course, I have to clean up my surface. So anyway, I will uh, make sure that these are completely dry. Now they are quite wet with the spraying that I did on top. And I'm also going to scrunch them up. I don't want them to look as perfect as they, as they are. This is also going to help the edges as well. They are going to fray more, which is a lovely look. For some reason, uh, burlap also twine is great to work with when you are creating fall projects. That texture is beautiful and the color as well. And now, since I promised that I will be working with uh, products that I have in my stash for years, I'm bringing in a pattern paper that I have, I don't know, six, seven years old. This is by Prima from a really, really old collection, which uh, although I loved and bought, I never used. So I'm going with uh, one of the black pages in here that has some writing, just because I want to have some contrast between the burlap and the similar colored background. I'm using my paper trimmer and this happens to be the tickled edge, so it is going to make the edges quite rough. But uh, if you don't have such a paper trimmer, you can always cut out your squares and just rough them up with the edge of your scissors. I'm going to cut out three squares, roughly about the size of the burlap. And I'm also bringing in my ephemera pack. These are ephemera from older Tim Holtz collections years and years ago. I keep on using them again and again and they never finish. So I will bring some of them for creating the layers. As I am putting those layers one on top of the other, I just make sure that I have contrasting colors. So although they overlap mainly one on top of the other, however, you can still see them peeking through. I'm just quickly securing them at the center with my stapler. This is not going to show. And as I said, just because I have to cover up a 
big uh, page, a uh, big real estate, since this is an art journal, I'm creating three clusters. However, if you want to turn this into a smaller project, for example, into a card, then you can just create one cluster and this can be the focal point of your card. You can also make it quite tiny and fit three of them in a card if you like, especially if it's one of those long slimline cards. And you can use smaller stamps for your focal points of leaves, apples, etc. I'm super super happy with the page today. I love the colors and how it came together. All I need to do is to add my motivational quotes. That's always something that I like to do. I'm keeping an area quite blank this time. I'm not going to do anything on the right side of the page. I'm just going to add a few small black and white quotes on top of the focal points. So again, I used an old product, my quote stickers by Tim Holtz, that I keep on using again and again the last years. And I went with live simply, give generously, find joy in the ordinary. And that was my fall project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. If you did, don't forget to leave me a comment. I absolutely love reading them and also like the video. It really helps. Just like always, down below you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used, at least whatever I, it was still available since I did use products that were really, really old. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I hope you all have a lovely day.